Alright my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of Do It Better. And this is going to be one of our hints and tips and kind of how I did it episodes. And uh, we've got lots to jump into from last episode. Uh, if you've missed last episode, it was the rebuild of the reptile house. I will link it above for you now, my friends. Feel free to go and check it out. Uh, some of you left some really kind comments. You really seem to like the build. And uh, I'm really, really happy that, you, that you're enjoying the series uh, as well. Um... Just before we jump into today's episode, obviously I've got the Tropical Wings series going alongside this one. And I think to try and find a healthy balance with the two series, I think I'm going to have to start rotating them on a weekly basis. Obviously, when I put this series out, two videos go out in a week for it because I tend to do the reveal episode and then um, how it's done. And then with Tropical Wings, what I'm planning to start doing with that project is um, putting it out basically, you know, every other week because I'm going to rotate it with this series but I'm going to start live streaming again something I mentioned a long time ago I was going to start live streaming on the channel I'm going to start live streaming that series so you can see kind of how that's built so rather than doing an episode like I do for this you kind of can come along the journey and uh, and see how I do it so that's just kind of the state of play where both of these series are concerned uh, and because I am trying to put some new stuff on the channel you might have seen the new little city builder that's on the channel and I, I'm I'm basically I'm at a point now with the channel where I want to really start um, doing some more stuff than just Planet Zoo basically I know the bulk of you are here for Planet Zoo but there's lots of stuff I want to kind of explore it's supposed to you know be my little corner of the internet where I just do all my gaming and um, I've literally just been doing Planet Zoo recently um, you know I love the game but it's time to like get a bit of variety on the channel I think but anyway let's jump into today's episode that was just a quick side note to let you know what's happening with a few things and uh, what we're talking about today what we're going to try to kind of show you today is um, is the uh, um, reptile house basically I don't know why my train of thought had disappeared on me there yeah it's the reptile house and um, this is quite a big build to kind of jump in and try and dissect and you know give you hints and tips and stuff but I feel like I've got a couple of things we can talk about um, and that I can and that I can show you basically that I think will be really interesting and it might help you with your um, you know, you're building, you know, as, as you go forward with playing the game and whatnot. Um, you know, a lot of people seem to really, really like the interior. And I was pleasantly surprised by that because, you know, it's nothing, it's not too out there. You know, I've got very um, safe with the colours and, and whatnot, but people really seem to like the, the interior. So I'm going to give you some tips on, you know, some of the interior choices that I made and how you can do that. I'm going to talk you through a way to kind of hide... Um, elevated pathway because this isn't on a um, raised up bit of ground this is actually all elevated path that this was built on so I'm going to give you some tips on that as well and then I will then maybe just pick some bits and bobs you know from the build potentially and kind of show you how I did it um, you know and, and and do that so we'll kind of just head out, head around the, the build and, and, we'll, and we'll do that going forward I'm going to try to keep these videos to under half an hour it's difficult um, because there's lots and lots to kind of dissect in these builds but that's what I'm going to try and do so I'm going to try and go in with you know a thing you know in mind as we uh, as we take a look so when we first uh, before we enter the building sorry the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was the way the buildings kind of put together lots of people really like the design you know even though I've used that kind of generic uh, brick in the game lots of people like the design and I think a lot of it is that there's a lot of depth to this building even though it's just very much just the, the red bricks basically so kind of all I did to achieve um, this kind of um, this this look on the front of the building is if I was to select these two pieces now as you all know I use non grid pieces because you've got far more creative freedom with the non grid pieces you would never be able to create these holes for the windows using gridded pieces it's just it's too difficult basically so um, I use non grid pieces but to kind of just get that overlap gang that you can see there all I've done is I have got the two pieces like so um, I actually, if you, if I was to raise this piece up, you'll see they, they literally, they touch, they go face to face. So I put the bottom layer in first, and then I literally just duplicated and pulled it forward, and that's kind of how I got that lip. Um, and then once I kind of had that, and I, you know, because I basically went and did all of the kind of brick first, leaving the gaps for the windows. I built one window out, and then it was just a case of duplicate, pull that along. Then you know where all your gaps are going to be. Um, once I did that, then I found some, you know, some pieces that I could do the detail work with. Um, so this trim, 
but all it is is the classic roof trim stone. Um, so I put a layer on the front that was like a flat layer and then if you go underneath I just rotated it on its back and then I did the underneath as well just to kind of make sure that we covered all all the little gaps that might have been showing obviously if we go inside the buildings you will see that I did all of the insides of the buildings as well you know so the windows are actually um, there for a purpose um, and uh, we did all the insides white um, and it's that double wall um, uh, design and trick that I do with the majority of my buildings that you get a different look than you do on the outside and with this building it was really important to do so because it was one of the ways we helped disguise some of the ugly edges on the raised path that we use so that's kind of how I achieve that 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 uh, that look on the building where it appears as though it sits further out at the top than it does the bottom and then it was just a case of you know finding some pieces to kind of fill in for these pillars um, to kind of give it some extra depth make it look like it's not just floating and whatnot um, you know you want it to be structurally you want it to structurally look like it makes sense as well and then the middle bit again it was just a case of um, you know just building this out um, and um, you know just placing that just a little bit further forward wanted to go higher so we could do something a bit different with the roof this is actually just an in-game piece this roof you can you can find this pretty easy and I, I managed to go like around uh, just using this piece um, and then there was other bits that I used um, and then up here I just did it slightly different because I, I didn't want it to be like too generic and whatnot so yeah that's really you know pretty simple how the building was kind of how it, how it come together now we head inside, gang, and uh, I want to talk to you about kind of like the interior, my decisions, and like how I achieve certain things. Now, lots of people are like a big fan of the way that I've done the exhibit boxes. Um, and just so you can kind of get an idea of how this is achieved, I will show you, basically. So all it is, it's just a case of leveling, um, just leveling non-gridded pieces. So there's plaster, there's some wooden uh, pieces and then there's just some bits I use for detail but it's a case of just getting it level so the way I do this is um, I will what I'll do is I'll jump outside and I'll actually show you kind of how it was done we could probably just put an exhibit box over over here it's probably easier to show you than it is to uh, try and explain it to be honest with you um, I've got to find the exhibit boxes now while they evading me i will never know so if i was to put this exhibit box let's find somewhere that's like a bit easier for you guys to see uh yeah if we put this exhibit box down here like so that's your exhibit box okay so that's your glass level at the front now i think we can all agree that the problem with the exhibit boxes is they're too large and they just don't look very good when you're trying to build something realistic so the best thing i find to do to build that realism out is to make the glass smaller make the actual um viewable area on the grass piece a bit smaller and the way i achieved this for this build was obviously we just kind of built areas out using plaster pieces but obviously we got some depth we got um, you know some different gradients to it and uh, essentially this is how I did it so if we were to go to construction I'm not going to change the colors I'm just going to use all of the generic stuff um, if we go to here so this piece here the stained wood wall that's the piece that I use okay um, not the gridded one I used the I always use the non gridded one because uh, that's just the way I am that's the way I roll and so I would press X and I'll rotate it on its side because I prefer the wood to go this way rather than the wood to go up it's just just what I prefer basically and also if you do this um, you can achieve much smaller items like this whereas if you were to have the wood going up you just can't achieve an item that small basically so so top tip as well to kind of keep in mind so what we do is I would have this uh, piece here and then obviously there's a layer beyond this isn't there so what I would do as well is we would have um, we go to plaster pieces now so if we go to your plaster pieces um, we just select this piece and we'll rotate this inwards and we'll take this up so that's going to be the top that's going to be the bottom okay so that, that's the that's the first two things you kind of want to remember is that that's top and bottom um, we will obviously mess around with this to kind of create our different sizes for for uh, for the um, for the glass viewing area basically so, so you've got those two pieces uh, in, in place and then what I would also do is rotate this piece on its end uh, we'll come out uh, to here and then we would rotate this way so then we get a nice uh, we get a nice lip here where the wooden piece kind of stops um, 
so we will just put that piece there that could be as thick or as thin as you wanted it basically it's really really up to you it's all about your creative decisions so then we stick that piece there so we know that's going to be kind of like the end point um, and then if we were to rotate that this way then you kind of got a pillar that this kind of sits on and you'll see examples of this once I build this out I'll show you an example of a, a finished a proper finished one like in the build so you got that there right so then if we were to click on this and then we were to get another plaster piece and I will recolor this one just so that we uh, can tell the difference we get another plaster piece we're gonna rotate this one and we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna not like that it needs to be flat then we're gonna rotate and then we're gonna stick it right behind the other item basically like so and we're going to rotate that uh, we're going to come up we're going to get another kind of like nice little lip there and we will replicate the same and get it kind of at the top uh, as well and we would just take this piece up okay now we're going to take these two bottom pieces because we want the glass viewing area to be a bit larger so we will basically take that to there okay so that's now going to be your viewing area there what I then do was would just select all this obviously if you're not building on grid you won't be able to like take it like push it back um, but you push it back and then what you want to do is this green part you want to be borderline you just want it to almost touch the glass you want to leave a little bit of a gap because you don't want to view it on the inside so you get it to touch the glass like so and there you have it you've kind of got that design where you've got those levels to the to the interior you can then select this piece uh, go to metal you could use whatever materials you want you could use wood if you want I just really like using these pieces I think these are perfect for kind of building out frames for your windows um, and then you can take it back and then the way you get this to kind of line up nicely as well um, is we will um, just get that there and we will take it right to the edge of that piece so then you again get another nice little lip and you would take that uh, I'm not going to do all of it because there's lots I want to talk about in today's episode but you take that um, you kind of do go to there go up to the top and then you just kind of continue that around the edge of the window that you want and that will create that design that I have done in the building. So if I was to just head inside the building again and show you, um, that's essentially what we've done with the exhibit boxes gang. So as you can see, look, um, that's essentially all it is. It's just levels uh, of the material. And then we're pulling areas out. So we've got areas where these wooden parts finish. Again, you can see it over here. It's really apparent over here. You've got that nice um, you know, initial one, the wooden at the bottom, the one that's sunk in, the frame around it, and then you can really finish it off with all the little details you want. I've even put like a nice little wooden trim over the top of that wooden piece to like give it a bit more depth and uh, you know, a bit more character as well. So it's really not that difficult to achieve this look that I've done inside this building, it really, really isn't. Um, it's a very, very simple uh, but effective design, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, give it a go. If you, see, you know, I know a lot of you have said how much you really enjoyed the interior. So feel free to kind of give that a go, gang, um, because it will, uh, it will really, really like hammer home like a really different and unique look for um, your builds. Something else as well that um, you might not be able, be aware of, but I kind of this is something I feel like I should make you aware of because you might find this like a little fun thing to do. Now remember, I put this door in here because I just wanted it to look a certain way. But for our zookeepers to get in here, this door would have to be removed. Now you will remember that when we uh, when I was showing you around, you would have looked at this room and thought, well, that's the exhibit entrance. Uh, sorry, the uh, habitat entrance gate. So when he walks in here, how does he get there? if there's stairs in that in place because once you go inside a hab you don't have to put path and whatnot now the way this actually works is if you build this out in the correct way your staff will actually walk up this and treat it like it's stairs inside a habitat there's lots of examples online of what of, of clever ways that people have um use the fact that this happens in their builds i think um i think oh my god there there's a there's a there is a creator whose name evades me at the moment, a very, very um, well-known Planet Zoo creator who built out a sea lion habitat and he had a bridge that went over the water. But because the habitat gate was on the outside, the bridge actually worked. It actually worked. It was just literally a metal sheet that they'd put across. But because it was wide enough and it was traversable, the, get, the um, zookeepers actually walked across it. Really, really clever. And, you, you know, there's lots of... Um, the, 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 
the creative possibilities are endless, um, you know, where this is concerned. So that's a good thing to remember. It's actually a top tip to remember. And the ground doesn't have to be all slanted underneath. Like if I was to remove these stairs, you'll see there's nothing underneath there, gang. It's literally just some plaster pieces to create stairs. Um, to get the perfect stairs, make some stairs using your path get a few pieces on them and then you'll get the right gaps so, that, so then they will look symmetrical and they'll look amazing as well that's another top tip for creating really good uh, and consistent uh, staircases actually use the path tool to your advantage so yeah that's a top tip to uh, keep in mind if that's something that you want to kind of explore and that's something you want to mess around with in the game um, I'm not going to talk too much about like this habitat and how I do these walls because I've got tutorials on the channel that show you how to do this if you are interested in that sort of thing, making these really natural kind of jagged walls with the uh, you know the mud mud pieces uh, coming through them. Um, these plant pots are literally the new plant pots, as you can see, the new conservation flower pots. Um, they're literally layered on top of each other to create bigger pots, and then obviously you see the bit at the bottom, and you can put the mulch in and some plants. That's literally all it is. You, the recolorable one's really nice as well because you can get nice kind of that black lip on on the top, and then we've got these um, bits at the bottom. So feel free to give that a go. I think mean, that's a really really good tip. Um, to kind of remember uh, if we were to come round this way someone was asking me about ceiling heights um, not particularly for this build but it was it was something that was asked a long long time ago on how do I get my ceiling height so bang on basically now for the average ceiling height they usually uh, if I if my memory serves me correct they're they're not much more than a foot above a, a doorway I believe but for the game the way I do it, um, I don't know why I've gone on there. The way I do it in the game is if I was to get a door, now there's one I use in particular because I just think the sizing's perfect. It's this um, metal door here. Um, this has got a lot of uses, this door, other than just a door as well. You can turn this into countertops and all sorts if you rotate it on itself. So if you get the door and you just put it on floor level, and then you was to get a plaster piece, get the square plaster piece, right? Take this square plaster piece up, to just above the doorway so it's just touching basically like so so you put that in now press x because obviously it will give you an automatic piece and if you rotate that piece and go like there that is your ceiling height that is basically how i do it for a lot of the ceilings i might take it up slightly for some and obviously there are some buildings where you know ceiling heights are a lot higher but like for this uh, build here for instance you'll see that ceiling height is kind of just above the doorway uh, there um, if i try and find like a room where this is actually kind of like a parent um, not in here because that's a, that's a, a room that um, I realized I hadn't bloody finished if, yeah if I come in here look you can see that ceiling height above the doorway um, and it just kind of makes sense doesn't it and then the ceiling is just a bit higher here because we decided to go with a little glass area above the door really it's just kind of like however you want it but to get a nice like very kind of realistic low ceiling that's the best way to do it and that's the way I do it and then it really gives you uh, a good way to kind of um, base your building and base your, your rooms off of uh, off of that design um, so that's another little top tip so that was one of the things I said I was going to do so I've shown you how to do those designs for the boxes I kind of talked you through how I came up with that design on the front um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about like the big thing I wanted to talk to you about in today's episode was the hiding of the uh, path the edges on the path so this build you will notice obviously you have to go up some steps to go into the build so it is slightly elevated this build obviously it doesn't look that way because the building goes to ground level but you will find with a lot of buildings like this you will go up some steps and they will go to ground level you know it's it, it, not everything is built um, you know not all pathways are actually at floor level I even think about the house that I live in we have to go up a step to go through our front door so technically our you know our, our floor our living room and our hallway and kitchen floor it's not actually on ground level it's slightly elevated and that's the case for a lot of buildings so that's one of the reasons why uh, you know with these more expansive and bigger builds I like to have you know a slightly elevated uh, way into the building now I am not the king at the terrain tools I really don't like the the terrain tools if I'm being very honest I think they're a bit finicky and I don't actually think they're user friendly especially for people that are more casual players I think people that don't put in the hours because they 
they don't want to play it the way, say, I do. I like to play this game very in, like in a very intense manner, building realistic stuff, okay? So it takes a lot of brain power, a lot of patience, and a lot of time. Some people don't like that. Some people just like to jump into Planet Zoo and just, you know, make a, a nice little hab and, uh, you know, build out their zoo, have something to look at, see people walking around and the animals, and that's what they want. And, and, and it's perfectly fine. Everybody's gaming experience should be different and it should be, you know, unique to the person that's playing the game. And so, with that kind of said, there are some things that, like, you know, you can do if you don't want to mess around with the terrain tool and still get elevated buildings that look nice, basically. That's the that's essentially the point I'm making. So if we go over here again, so uh, I am just going to select all this and delete and delete it because we, we don't need that now. So if we go over here again and we get the path uh, the path tool, okay? Um, why is that elevated? It should not be elevated. Oh, that's why, because I've been, I have been—I was doing something else, wasn't I? There we go. Let's get rid of those two things. Um, so, if we get the path tool, uh, we'll just put a couple of pieces in, and then we're going to go up, okay? We're going to go up. But we are going to create a smaller staircase. So, how you can do this is you go to elevated length, you tick that, and then if you take this down, you can do it in 0.5 meter sections, which I find really helpful. So, you know this is going to be half, and then that's a full meter, and then half, that's two meters. So you know your staircase is now two meters up, okay? So you've created a smaller staircase. Now something else that I do with my path that some people might not know or be aware of is I turn a lot of this stuff off, okay? like. I don't have flattening terrain or tunneling on because it messes with the terrain levels. Um, the curb on the ground path, um, I basically untick all of this and then you're left with the most basic version of the path. And then when you elevate it, you're left with a pretty basic version as well. But you are still left with this lip uh, on the path and for each one you'll get a different lip. Some of them are concrete, some of them are wood uh, and so on and so on. And There's even a really nice one as well is this one. Let's look at this grass path. That's amazing. I really like that. And then if you see this natural path, if you do this you get a really nice like um, muddy kind of design as well. So um, it's a good thing to kind of like have a little mess around with uh, if, you, if you weren't aware of that. But you are still, as you can see, left with this pretty ugly kind of um, wooden section, okay? So if you was to build an elevated bit and you want to put your building in, you're going to want to hide that. I'm sure you will. Like, um, I, I really don't like it and I felt the need to hide it. So that whole building, all the pathway in there, you should be aware, is an elevated level. And so I've had to hide the edges of the path in all the way around that building. Now, the way that I achieve this is that I build double thick walls basically so say we were going to have a plaster wall on the outside um, and then we're going to have like a different material on the inside oh of course that's gone a bit weird um, you can do it so that it aligns that's the, probably the best way to do it so what I would do is whatever material I'm having on the inside you just take it and you just do it so that you can't see that anymore so it disguises it and then say we wanted to go with uh, a wooden design on the outside uh, we would go and select our wooden piece rotate that and then we would basically do it until that disappears and so then if you go around the whole building and obviously you take that to ground level as well so then you kind of disguise in the fact that this is elevated and you could do all your stairs but yeah if you oh, why did that do that if you follow kind of this um, this frame of uh, fault as you go around the building you will hide those ugly edges you won't get any clipping from your guests either because you're going very tight to the actual wooden section and uh, you won't get any clipping if your building runs along a path from the outside either because you've done the same um, for the outside as well and that is just a really really quick and easy tip to disguise the ugliness of a raised pathway because unfortunately you just cannot get rid of this the minute you raise it up even if you turn all of the other options off so um, that's just another little healthy tip basically where that's concerned not sure about anything else um you know there's ways that you know, someone um, left a really kind comment about how um lovely they thought the roof looked because um of all the different raised levels the different uses of materials now that again that just harps back to um having the reason this happened it, it, it was a happy accident basically the exhibit boxes are very large um and so when you put those in those were a lot higher than the usual ceiling heights so uh, for instance i know for a fact that the exhibit boxes are underneath this section and as you can see it's had to be a little bit higher than say this section because there wasn't um sorry that's in this section because 
because there is no exhibit boxes along here. There is an exhibit box here, so it had to be slightly higher. There's exhibit boxes in this room. So as you can see, look, it's higher there, but it hasn't had to be in another part. And essentially, it's just a happy accident. I've had to make it higher there than there because uh, the exhibit boxes needed it to be higher. And then just, just use your imagination, basically, to disguise those edges, all I've done is taken the trim that I've used all the way around the edge and I've used it again there, but I've double layered it and changed the color. Uh, done with a, a dip, little bit of a different roof design by adding the metal trim all the way around the edge of this. But then I have basically just rose this up so it still looks as though the lines are all the same and that the, the roof follows the same pattern. Um, it really, you know, you've just got to sometimes think outside the box. You know, I tell people a lot, when I'm building, I'm referring to loads of references i will i, I will sometimes have um, you know two three four five images up on my second screen to kind of look at why i'm building just to make sure that we can hammer that realism home um and and you know get and get it and get it bang on basically um you know the only other thing i did want to talk to you about was the split komodo habitat because this is um something that some of you might not know you can do basically so obviously on every um, on every uh, habitat you can only have one gate, can't you? Okay, but if you wanted to do something like this where it appears as both animals are in the same hab but actually they're not, it's pretty simple, okay gang? So what you do is, you would, if I uh, if I click on the gate, that's the, probably the best way because it will give me the outline, won't it, of the, um, of the uh, hab, uh, it won't give me all of it. But anyway, so basically, as you can see, you can see the uh, the hab perimeter there. So what all it all it is is really really simple. This put a central line in, okay? Just sit, put a central line of fence in. Uh, so you've got that piece there, right? Now I use null uh, pieces because um, we've created natural walls using the edges of the building, using the internal kind of. Um, decorations that I've done and so start with that piece and then from there put your gates in where you want them so we've actually got one gate there one gate there it's very symmetrical this there's one either side okay then you want to build your perimeters out so literally just go round the round the uh, edge where you want your hab to be do both sides okay so then from there all I did was I built the central reservation out and I did all of the stuff to make it look like it was, you know, one big habitat that could, you know, sorry, two habitats that could become one big habitat. Did all the things I needed to do. So I put my little gate in that would connect both sides. I put the door in for our staff that would connect both sides. I kind of used a, a mud wall design behind all of this. And then I built all that out first. And then you've got your central reservation and you're left with the rest, basically. And you can decorate it out. But looking at it, it looks like it is two habitats that become one large one by adding, you know, this door being open, um, you know, and even if you wanted, those doors can be open. And it's just, it really is that simple. It looks like one big hab, but it's two. Um, I've been saying for ages, I wish we had multiple doors, we can have multiple doors on habitats because I think it makes more sense. Like my uh, Galapagos Daughters one is a very, very good example of that. Um, I think if we had a, a gate there and one inside, it would make a bit more sense. But, you know, I, I hope the devs listen to a couple of things that we talk about uh, soon. You know, multiple hab gates, um, a few different sizes of exhibit boxes would be amazing because obviously we're having to use tricks like I've shown you today to make them feel and look a bit more realistic. Whereas if we had a few sizes, we might not have to do that so much. But um, other than that, gang, I don't think there's too much more for me to show you. You know, we could be here a long time dissecting this entire build, but I think they're the main things to take from it. And um, hopefully there's some helpful tips that you can take and put into your builds going forward. Uh, if there is anything else from this build, though, that you would like to um, ask me questions about, I will be more than happy to answer in the comment section. Uh, anything you need to know. Um, I get asked lots and lots of questions on a weekly basis on an array of different Planet Zoo videos and I try my best to keep up with um, everything that I'm asked. So yeah, feel free in the comment section to get involved, ask any questions that you want about this build and let me know if the tips that I've uh, you know shown you in today's episode have been helpful for you going forward. But my friends, we are done and dusted for another episode of the how-to version of our Let's Build, um, sorry, of our um, Do It Better series. Oh, Jesus, I Lots of series on my mind, haven't I? Uh, but we're done and dusted. If you're new around here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. But until next time, my friends, you stay safe and you stay humble. And I'll see you real, real soon.